1 through verse 4, and then we're going to go over to Genesis chapter 4 and read verse 1 through 7. Uh, so, Brother Tony, why are you going from Hebrews? How many of you know what Hebrews chapter 11 is? It's called the faith chapter. Everybody in there, who does it start out with there? I want you to know, uh, understand that it is going to have the definition of faith. But let, let's go ahead and read it, and then we'll, we'll get into I've entitled this message, Real Faith Makes the Difference in Religion. And I've preached uh, along these lines before, but I want you to understand that, and you've, you've heard me make this statement before, the, only, the, the thing that we don't need in our society and in our churches is religion. We need relationship. There's a lot of different religions across the world today. Uh, I took a religions class when I was in secular college, and it was very eye-opening to me because the reason, here's the reason being, you know, I, I had come to the point in my life to where uh, I was kind of like some of these other college students. I was one of these free thinkers. How many of you know what I'm talking about? I mean, I, I got to thinking, Brother Henry, uh, maybe I've been brainwashed all my life. I've been raised up in a missionary Baptist church all my life. And so as you're sitting in class, I was, my foundation was on, on, the, on God. And my foundation was firmly placed in the Word of God. But for some reason, after I got to listening to some of these professors speak, I got to thinking, Sister Lori, uh, man, maybe I have been brainwashed. And I want you to understand, I have been raised in church all of my life. That's the reason why I cannot stress it enough. High school students, when you go off to college, know what you believe in. Not just because Brother Tony preaches it and because... Aunt Sadie and Uncle Sap said it. and, and the, Let me tell you something. You need to know what you believe in and why you believe it. You know, um, when I first come here to, to talk to you about being the pastor here at this church, uh, there is a class that I offer. It's entitled Back to the Basics. And we're going to get started on that class. We may, I was going to start it in September. Uh, we may start it after the first of the year. But so important for us to know the basics of why we believe what we believe. Just simple things about salvation. What is salvation? What are you saved from? Why do we believe what we believe in, uh, in the Lord's Supper? Why do we believe in what we believe in about baptism and salvation and, and all those things? Folks, we need to know and you need to know what you believe in and why you believe it. Because simply, and I've heard people uh, defend their faith like this, Brother Steve. Well, that's what my grandpa taught me. That's not going to get it. You need to know, we need to know why we believe something. Now, I was one of those that went to class and I was like, man, I've been brainwashed. And the more I read the Word of God and the more that I studied the Word of God on top of what I already knew, I realized that beyond a shadow of a doubt, I was in the right thing. Amen? So, when you look at Hebrews chapter 11, look at verse 1 through verse 4. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Now I want you to understand, it's by faith that we believe a lot of things. You know, I, I've told the story about uh, me leading a very, very intelligent doctor to the Lord. For so many years that I pastored at Bethany in Whitehall, uh, this doctor tried to put God and tried to put salvation in a test tube. He just could not understand. And then one day, as I led his son to the Lord through vacation Bible school, I went over to his house and talked to his son, led him to the Lord, and then I turned around and looked at this doctor in his face, which he was my doctor, and I looked at his wife and I said, are you saved? Simple question. Are you saved? The wife said, yes, I was saved. She gave me her testimony. The doctor asked at that point in time during this conversation, he asked his whole family, his wife and his three sons, to go into the other room. And boy, when they got into the other room, he come unglued said, don't ever ask me 
if I'm saved in front of my children? And I said, you know what, doctor? I said, you're a doctor and you tell me all the time what I need to do. What medications I need to take. I trust you because you're my doctor. I said, let me tell you something. I'm a pastor and a preacher. If I didn't tell you about Jesus Christ, I wouldn't be the preacher and pastor that I know I should be. You know what? I said, you're trying to put Jesus in a test tube. And I said, you're trying. Let me tell you. Now, he turned over to Hebrews chapter 11. And I said, let me tell you something. Faith is just that. You have to place your faith in Jesus Christ. It's by faith, doctor. About two Sundays went by, two weeks. His son came for baptism. And that very Sunday, his dad came. And he's like, a doctor, and let me tell you something. You would think, I mean, he was a prominent part of the, of the community. And buddy, let me tell you something. We had a revival service. And so, when you look at this verse of Scripture, you're going to notice it says, again, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. But look at verse 4. You're going to notice two different religions here. You're going to notice a religion by Abel, and you're going to notice a religion or a belief system through Cain. Now, we all know the story about Cain and Abel. Cain slew his brother Abel. But I want you to understand the difference in these two individuals. Through, it says in verse 4, By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained uh, witness that he was righteous, God testifying uh, of the, his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. Now, at this point I want you to turn over to Genesis chapter 4. Did you look at verse one through verse 7, and the first part of it, it talks about Adam and Eve. Look at verse 1, Genesis chapter 4, verse 1 through verse 7. It says, And Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. I want you to understand something. People think that Cain came into this blind and that he didn't know what he was doing, Brother Steve. Let me tell you something. From the very beginning, they knew what a blood sacrifice was. They had already, they had already killed and, and slain innocent blood because when they was in the Garden of Eden, they realized that they had sinned, they realized they were naked. That was the first bloodshed in the Scripture. They had to use that. They realized they were naked and they had to get those coats. They, they sewed fig leaves together, but they also killed and, and, and drew blood. So uh, Cain is not coming into this ignorant. But I want you to look at this, this verse 5. But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Now, I want you to turn over to Matthew chapter 9 and verse 29. Again, we're talking about two different religions here. Again, the title of this message is Real Faith Makes the Difference in Religion. Folks, you ought to know, when we know the Scripture and we know that the Word of God teaches a certain thing about a certain doctrine, folks, we need to stand on that. Amen? We need to know what we're looking at when we look at the Scripture. Matthew 9, 29, I'm not going to read all of it, but Jesus said, what does he say there? This is the, the excerpt that I want you to pay attention to. It says, according to your faith, be it unto you. Jesus did not say, and I want you to listen to this, 
Jesus did not say according to your fortune. Jesus did not say according to your fame. Jesus did not say according to your fate. He did not say according to your feeling. He did not say according to your family. Amen. He said, he didn't say according to your friends. Folks, it says, it is according to your faith. Real faith makes a big difference in religion. Folks, Abel is God's first hero of the faith in the Bible. Let's learn how real faith tonight makes a difference in religion. You know, there's nothing wrong with religion as long as it doesn't take the place of relationship. Amen? Now, here's the very first point. Faith makes a positive difference in religion. Now, as I was studying this, you know, when we, were, we went to church while we were in Florida, and that pastor actually preached out of uh, this Hebrews chapter 11. And, you know, when, when he's sitting there preaching, you know, of course, like I told you this morning, I'm saying amen, praise the Lord, and then all of a sudden I look down and I'm like, man, this would make a good sermon outline. Amen. After everybody was staring me down for being vocal in church, amen. Faith makes a positive difference in religion. Hebrews 11, 4 again, it says, By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. You know, some say all religions are the same. You ever heard that? <clears throat> Folks, that's not so. Some say... Uh, all religions are just as good. And that's not so. But here God's word tells us that Abel's offering, listen to this very closely, catch this, Abel's offering was better than Cain's offering. So all religions are not the same. Amen. When you look at this, why? Because when, uh, when religions today, when we're looking at religions, we get down to the truth of the matter. There are only two types of religions today. Say, but Tony, I, I, I look in the, you Google and just put in churches. Okay, have you ever done that? I did that. Let me tell you how important a good website is. You know, I pulled up Baptist churches on Google when we were in Destin. They had, I think, two churches. And I'm like, I'm going to look at their website, and we're going to look and see what they believe in. Amen? Just because they got Baptist on the sign don't mean they Baptist. Amen? Well, I got to looking, and I, I like the motto of the church. At, that's what got me. I looked at their website, and they said the very first thing, and they have it on a sign outside of their church, they said, the great, a great commission church. Woo, boy, you're talking about fire you up. So I got on their website and I talked to them or uh, talked to the pastor after church or before church, and he was like, you know, this is not a popular thing. You know, you know, I come here 30 years ago, started in a little old bitty church over here. We're celebrating my 30 years here as pastor. He said, We come here and we had about 14 people. We started this church. And he said, now we run seven or 800. But I've been here 30 years. He said, a lot of people come and a lot of people go. Because what? Because I preach the truth of God's word. And a lot of times it's not popular. We have people that come in that, that are uh, there to enjoy the beach. And he did say this, and I told Kim this earlier. He said, you mean, you mean that you're a pastor and a preacher and you come to church on your vacation? And I said, well, just like Kim said earlier, you know, we, when we go on vacation, we don't take a vacation from God. Amen? Well, that's another sermon. I could really preach on that. But I, I wanted to go somewhere and worship. Amen? And let me tell you something. I loved it. It, it, was a, it was a great experience for me. I, I just loved to hear people preach. But you see, false religion, when you look at this, we look at the difference in religions there's only two types of religions today. There's true religion and there's false religion. False religion is salvation by self 
and works and merit. True religion is salvation by Jesus Christ only. The, these two boys, Cain and Abel, represent false and true religion. If you look at this in Scripture, Cain represents the false and Abel represents the truth. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4, let's look at it again. It says, By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. Why was Abel's religion so much better than Cain's religion? Why is our true religion, what we believe in, why is it better? Number one, it's not false. That's common sense. It's the truth. Now, when I go into a doctor, Brother Steve, I don't want him to tell me something that's false. If I'm dying of cancer, I want him to tell me that I'm dying with cancer. Amen. When I'm in church, guess what? I want someone to preach to me the truth of God's Word. I don't want them to teach and preach to me a false doctrine, a false religion, just because it makes me feel good. If you go into a church and, or go into a doctor's office and, he tell, and you got cancer and he tells you, oh, you got cancer, but you're going to be fine, man. You're going to be good. Let me tell you something. I want people to tell me the truth. Amen. So when you look here, the religion of Cain, Genesis chapter 4, verse 1 through 3. Understand that Cain was a farmer. In Jude 11, and we're going to go through this quick, I just, we've already read that. In Jude 11, it tells us, Woe unto them, for they uh, have gone in the way of Cain. You ever thought about that scripture? The religion of Cain, what is that? It was a religion of his own imagination. His own ingenuity. His own self-effort. That is the religion of Cain. Let me tell you something. That is the feel-good religions. That is the, well, you come in and you sit down, and, and I'm not going to preach to you about sin, and I'm not going to preach to you about a place called hell. I'm going to make you feel good in every facet of your life. Folks, that's the religion of Cain. we got a lot of those going around, and you know, he said, Brother Tony, if there are, I had this question posed to me one time. Brother Tony, if those are false churches, then why they got so many people going to them? Have you ever, you ever thought about that? How many of the, I'm not saying that every church that has a big attendance is a false church. Don't say that. I'm not saying that. But I'm telling you, some of these false religions are big churches. What does Scripture say that I, that I quoted this morning? Wide is, the way, <laughs> wide is the way to destroy. There's very few people preaching and taking and choosing Jesus Christ because it says narrow is the way to eternal life. That pathway that we take, folks, there is false religion and there is the true church. There is true religion. Now, but Tony, I, I just don't agree with that. Well, just like I always say, you have your right to be wrong. Amen. Folks, there is the truth, and it's been that way since Genesis. Amen. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 through 10, it says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that it's not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. So I want you to notice something. Abel gave an offering and a sacrifice that was what? It was pleasing to God. Cain gave an offering that was not pleasing to God. Now, you've got, again, we're talking about Cain's religion. And you the very first part of that, Ephesians, what does it say in verse 8 again? For by grace are you saved through faith. And they would have never put this in here, this second part, Brother Randy, if people weren't trying to go Cain's way. So you look at it, it says, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Folks, God wants us to know and realize. The Apostle Paul wants us to realize that it's nothing that we can do in our own power. It has to be done through the blood of Jesus Christ. Folks, there's a difference in religion when it comes to our faith. Look at verse 9. It goes on. It's not of works, 
lest any man should boast. Verse 10, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So the religion of Cain was, and write this down, the religion of Cain was a bloodless religion. Cain's religion was no good because it lacked the shed blood sacrifice for his sin. You can't get blood out of a turnip. Amen. <laughs> Folks, he was trying to give an offering that was not acceptable to our God. Folks, it had no blood. It had no blood to do with it. Cain's religion was no good because it had culture, it had society, it had feel good instead of Calvary. Hebrews 9.22 And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And I love this. Y'all listen to this. We're a bunch of bloody Christians. You know us. And without the shedding of blood is no remission. Cain's religion was no good because Cain's religion was a religion without blood and it was a religion without redemption. Folks, there is a difference in your faith when it comes to religion. Now we're going to look at the good thing. Look at the religion of Abel. Abel followed God's plan for his religion. You cannot have faith unless God speaks. Abel believed the first gospel message God preached in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. He says this, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Roman, very quickly, Romans 16, 20, And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Galatians chapter 4, write this down. Galatians chapter 4, verse 4 and 5. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth His Son made of a woman made under the law. Verse 5 says, why, why did He come? That's the question. What are we talking about when we look at Abel's religion? Folks, verse 5 says, To redeem them that are under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Folks, Abel believed and understood the first gospel illustration given in the Bible. Abel's religion was God's religion of blood redemption. Luke chapter 11, verse 49 through verse 51. We're going very fast here, so just write these down. And It's called Bible study during the week. Amen? Write these scriptures down and read them during the week. Okay? Luke chapter 11, verse 49 through verse 51. It says, therefore also said the wisdom of God, I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them they shall slay and persecute. Verse 50, that the blood of all the prophets which was shed from the foundation of the world may be required of this generation, from the blood of Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, which perished between the altar and the temple. Verily I say unto you, it shall be required of this generation. Woe unto you lawyers! For ye have taken away the key of knowledge. Ye enter not in yourselves, and to them that were entering in, ye hindered. Do you know what all true prophets of God preached? Acts 10, 43. To him give all the prophets witness, and through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. All true preachers, all true religions preach what? They preach redemption of sin through Jesus Christ. Folks, if you, if you visit a church and they're preaching redemption and salvation and baptism other than what's in this word, folks, it is a false religion. Some folks say, well, Brother Tony, uh, I've had them come up to me, Brother Steve, and say, well, Brother Tony, they believe everything we do about salvation, but they just don't believe the same thing as baptism. False! Amen? false religion if they're not going by this word here and they say well but well, Tony they they're almost just like us that's the key word almost amen if I'm out here hunting and I got a big old turkey I know Chay's out there doing security if I got a big old there's there's the other one back there a the turkey hunter. 
Brother Kelly, if I go out here and I see a turkey come across there, I've never shot a turkey, by the way. Hint, hint. I hear when you get the turkey blood in you, amen, you just can't go back. I mean, you just you throw chunk rocks at deer hunting. I don't know. I've never experienced that. I've never experienced that before. But anyway, if you go out here, Brother Kelly, and I see a turkey come across there, and I'm like, you know what? That thing is just so beautiful, and I just don't really want to shoot it. But I guess I will. But my heart's not fully into it. And I shoot it and miss him. You know what? I missed it. It's almost don't get it. What is that? Well, Tony, that was close. Close only counts in hanger nades and horseshoes. So you see, Brother Tony, that's just, that's just not right. We need to have a little bit more sympathy. Let me tell you something. If you're teaching any other way to heaven than salvation by grace through faith and by the blood redemption of Jesus Christ, you're a false religion, and you may be leading people to hell. That's why I take it serious. Amen? There's a lot of things in the Bible that we try to skip over sometimes. Amen? Amen? We want to skip over it because it just doesn't fit our agenda. Folks, let me tell you something. The first church did a lot of things and practiced a lot of things sometimes that we don't necessarily like. But you know what? It's still the truth. And we still need to do it. You see, the religion of Abel is a blood redemption. But you see here, all true preachers preach Jesus as the only way to heaven. We sing a song in our services in some of the churches I pastor. It says, in my hand no price I bring. Simply to thy cross I cling. Folks, here's number two. Faith makes a practical difference in results. Hebrews 11.4 says, By which he obtained witness that he was righteous. There are only two types of religion, true and false, and there are only two types of people. There's saved ones and there's lost ones. Amen? Righteous and unrighteous. On the cross, God showed his great love and punished sin at the same time. Turn with me to Romans chapter 3. Turn over there with me. Y'all still here? Everybody talking, I'm having a good time. I don't know about y'all. I didn't get to preach last week. Somebody asked me, Brother Tony, I preached revival at some of these churches around here, and they sing for an hour. Hey, Amen. I ain't got nothing wrong with that, but you know what? I'm going to preach for an hour. Amen. I <laughs> had a guy tell me, Brother Tony, we have a long song service. I said, I don't care how long it is. I'm going to preach until I get done. Amen. Look at Romans chapter 3, verse 23 through verse 28. It says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption of that is in Christ Jesus. What did I say earlier? There's true religion and false religion. There is saved and there's lost. There's righteous and unrighteous. I say, but Tony, you're just as simple as anything, aren't you? As a butter bean. Folks, I'm simple. But I'm true. I'm on preach of truth, amen. You look at this. It says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But look here, it says, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a... And here comes a big word. I went to Sheridan. Some of y'all, how many of y'all going to Murfreesboro? Delight. Yeah, delight, y'all were pretty smart, wasn't you? Propituation. Boy, that's a big one, isn't it? But God has set forth to be a propituation through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say at this time, His righteousness, that He might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. 
Where is boasting then? It, it is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Y'all get that? Let me tell you something. Abel's faith was real. Cain's faith was a false religion. It was false. So you see here in this scripture, what is it about, Brother Tony? Is it about boasting? Is it about works for salvation? Is it, what is it about? What is salvation about? Folks, there's lost again and they're saved. What is it? There's either faith or there's folks that don't have faith. It says, therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. You see, they thought that they could keep the law and that would be all good. Amen? Have you ever thought about that? I, I've, I don't know if you, there's a religion that worships on Saturday. And I had some of them come to the church that I was pastoring. Ended up going through my class that I teach. There was three of them. And they would come, go to their church on Saturday. And they would come to our church, believe it or not, on Sunday. They'd come to my class, and that was it. So they'd come to that class, and we got to talking about salvation. And we got to talking about either keeping the law or not. And I asked them a simple question, can you keep the law? And they said, well, no. And I said, well, then all that other stuff is not any good. I'm going to explain it. They believed that on the Sabbath or on the Saturday that you could not work. You had to prepare all your food on Friday, and then on Saturday you couldn't work at all. They believed, now get this, and I'm not making fun of their religion, but I'm just telling you it's false. You either keep all of the law or you don't keep any of it. That's my point. If you moved a chair, now this is going to be make, make some of you laugh. If you move a chair on the Sabbath and it makes a furrow in the ground in the dirt, guess what? They considered that to be work on the Sabbath. It was against the law. I mean, when I was over in the Holy Land, and I've told this story many times even here, when I got on the Sabbat elevator, a Sabbat elevator was go to every floor. It would stop at every floor. Why? Because they believed that they touched the button that, that indicated what floor they was going to. That was work on the Sabbath. That was against their law. Yeah, I mean, they didn't like me very much. They was probably cussing me in whatever language they was using. I said, shalom, y'all, and just went and got me something to eat. But understand something. You cannot, the law can never save you. The law was meant to, yeah, to look at it and to say and try to, to adhere to a lot of things in the law. But understand, it was never meant to save you. Folks, it's by salvation, by grace, through faith. Say, but Tony, I just don't understand. There's a lot of folks even in the Baptist church today, they believe if they give an offering, if they're faithful, if they do everything that they need to do as far as an outward appearance, that that's good, that I'm good. That's not salvation. I can dunk you in that water up there until you grow gills, but that doesn't save you. It's by grace through faith. You can be saved anywhere you want to get saved. Amen? Faith, here's something else. This verse tells us the practical difference as I close. Faith makes a permanent difference in the record. Hebrews 11, 4 says, And by it he being dead yet speaketh. Abel's testimony of faith speaks to us today. Folks, I don't know about y'all, but I, I want a religion that will go on long after I am gone. Amen? I want one that will last forever and could have a testimony of faith long after I'm dead and gone. John 3.36 says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Here we go. You're either saved or you're lost. You're either righteous or you're unright. I don't care how old you are. I don't care if you're the smartest person in here. Let me tell you, you're not going to get eternal life and you're not going to heaven unless you're saved. Faith makes the difference. Grace is God reaching down from heaven saying, I love you. I want to save you. Faith 
is the hand that reaches up and takes hold of God's hand of grace. Do you want to be saved? Amen. There's got to be somebody here that may not know Jesus. Here's the way it, it, it goes. God says, I love you, and I want to save you, and I want to forgive you. You say, I believe it with all my heart, and I want to be saved and forgiven. And when your hand of faith takes hold of God's hand of grace, folks, that's salvation. Amen? You say, Lord, save me. I'm not bringing the fruit of the ground to the work of my hands, but I'm pleading the blood of Christ. Come tonight. You're a sinner, and you need Jesus. You say, but Tony, I'm a guest here. I'm a visitor here. I've never even heard you preach. I don't even know you. I want you to know this. Salvation is the most important decision you will ever make in your life. Amen? I don't care who you are, where you've been, or what you've done. God can save you today. As we stand, our musicians come.